once again, welcome to that here show, a story written by a current prisoner with your favorite journalist, Tony, man. This gentleman right here needs no introduction, man, because he's always been one of my favorite guests, man. Big L, brother, man. How you doing, man? Man, I'm good, bro. I can't complain, man. I got air in my lungs. You know, I'm alive, and I'm sitting here amongst the best audience on this side of the tracks. My boy, I appreciate you. Oh, man, you already know, man. The pleasure is all mine, man. And real quick, man, before we even dive into this juicy, juicy story, man. Man, the homie L, man, has been having some technical difficulties with his channel, man. Unfortunately, he got hacked. You know, he lost it. He literally lost his entire channel. You know, a, literally a year's worth of work, man, went down the drain. So if you would kindly, man, subscribe to his new channel, L, man. How can we reach your new channel, bro? Um, Well, it's still the same name, A Prisoner's Awakening. All lower lower caps. After you do the prisoners, is uh, when you when you type in prisoners, do that that little hyphen before the S. Uh, but yeah, prisoners awakening, bro. Um, and and hopefully you could um, drop the link so it could be easier for people down in the description. And yeah, man, like you said, I had my uh, my my channel hacked, unfortunately, by nefarious forces. And uh, you know we we're trying to get back up there to to. Uh, to keep spreading this positive message, the righteous message for the youngsters, and, you know, stories of caution. Hey, most definitely, uh, most definitely, uh, man. That That's exactly what we're here for, man, to, to spread awareness, man, to let everybody know, man, that this lifestyle is not worth it, man. You yourself, man, you've dedicated a lot of years to this lifestyle, man, and and, uh, and, and that's why I like hearing stories coming directly from you, man, because you've actually been there, man. You've actually been, lived there. You've actually been on these level four 180s, man. <laughs> So that's why I really enjoy your presence, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not here to boast about this or promote this type of lifestyle, man. We are completely against this lifestyle. I just had to say it, man. I know you guys get tired of me hearing you. I sound like a damn machine, but I just had to make it crystal clear, man. We're not about that. Yes, sir, man. Well said. Couldn't have said anything better myself. Um, but, yeah, man, just to reiterate, like I said, man, we're not here to glorify it. Uh, we're not here. Uh, we're here for the opposite, you know, because – for anybody out there that that's even thinking about going down that lifestyle of gangs and, and going to prison and thinking that that's like a um, honor, you know, carrying your stripes and things like that, at the end of the road, you're gonna find nothing but misery and, and life in prison, <laughs> straight up. Hey, hey, real quick, off the top of your head, man, how many, how many, how many homies, how many youngsters, even on the enemy side? How many people do you know, man, that have stayed forever young? Man, bro. Um, me personally, I know about four dudes that stayed forever young. You know, obviously lost their life. Um, and then I've heard of dozens of cases where, where youngsters lost their life. And as a result, you know, picture on the shirt, you know, at funeral, things like that. You know, uh, family's heartbreak, mother's crying, um, years and years of sadness, of emptiness, of, of you know, it, it's, it's very unfortunate. It's very disturbing. People don't ever think about how how deeply these families are impacted after these unfortunate incidents, man. It's, it's, it's sick, and it's happening all across the state, nor Northern California and Southern California, all across the country. Excuse me. I didn't mean to say that word. You're good. Um <clears throat> So yeah, man, that's that's why that's why I tell you, like, man, that's one of my passions. Like, if I could go back, um, one of the things that resonates with me is just if I could go back and uh, speak to my young self, um, I definitely wouldn't go back through the religious aspect. And there's nothing wrong with being religious and being a Christian man or a Muslim man or, or what have you, you know, Jewish, uh, Buddhist, etc. But I know that if somebody would have came back to um, try to reach out to me um, through the scope of, of, of a retired, <laughs> so to speak, gang member, somebody that's been there on, the, on all the yards that I've been on, that I've done, um, yeah, that I think I would have re it would have resonated a little more with me than the religious aspect because I, all I remember is just having like older heads that were ex gang members that were with the church. You know, and I, I couldn't relate to that, you know, so I, that's why I try to find when I started my channel, 
<clears throat> I try to um, emulate uh, um, the same message, but through a different course. You know, on this course, it's just by like having lived the lifestyle uh, uh, and just letting the youngsters, the real offenders, just uh, um, you know, choose for themselves. And I hope you guys choose the right path, man. All right, L man. Um, you know, as we all know, man, on these level four one eight, man, the politics can get very, very dirty, man. You know, a lot of deceiving, a lot of people, you know, getting used. Um, a lot of people are trying to climb up the ranks and try to become somebody, man, and they're more than willing to take the next man down. Um, it's very unfortunate, and it's but it's real life, man. So I understand, man, that you have a a tale, man, a precautionary tale, man, that you would like to to tell us, man. The floor is all yours, L man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. Uh, um, for anybody that knows me, man, you guys know that I try to omit certain names and certain things. But in this case, I'm going to get a little detailed, um, not to the detriment of anybody, but just, you know, for educational purposes. And, uh, yeah, man, like you said, like, so let me paint this. Let me let me set the stage up for you guys. Unfortunately, in prison, um, especially on the 180s, the level four yards, uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, in California, um, the 180 level four designs were specifically designed to hold the worst of the worst. You're talking about um, the the most dangerous convicts that have killed people on the streets, you know, or at least any type of life sentence that they earned, either through several robberies. Or, or through violent acts, et cetera, right? And then you have the shoe program. You have the shoe, which is like jail inside of jail, which is CDC's way uh, of locking down the most dangerous, you know, for, for a certain amount of time based on their infractions, right? Whether they stabbed somebody, whether they killed somebody, you know, what have you, whether they assaulted a staff member or killed a staff member. And when I mean staff, I mean like correctional officers or, or, or counselors or, or, or kitchen staff. So um, on the 180, that's the worst of the worst, like I said. So in this environment, um, when you involve um, the big four, you know, uh, the organizations, uh, the mafias, you know, if you will, um, these dudes right here, they operate at a, at a level that is very uh, um, intimidating um, to 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 those that don't have any type of knowledge or experience with it. And within within this level of experience, um, you have individuals that have been in and out of the shoe for years. Um, they've studied up. They've read. Um, some of the best minds in the history of the earth, philosophers, um, war strategists, uh, et cetera. And the conniving and, and the strategies and, and, and the tactics that they employ every day, even amongst themselves, is very dangerous, very disheartening, and very, 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 very uh, um, intimidating, honestly. So I'll give you an example before I get into the core story. When I was in New Corcoran, bro, um, there was this dude, his name was Trigger. I'm not going to say where he's from or whatnot, but his he was probably the smartest, most articulate, dangerous individual that I've ever had the mispleasure of running across. Um, and what I mean by that is this is a type of individuals that no one to say uh, certain things. Even if they're lying, they know how to spin the lies and somehow turn them into truths, you know? And that was that's a story for a different time, but this next individual from Compton, seven O's. Um, he tried to be like this dude Trigger, but he fell short. Um, so 
for those of you guys that have heard this story of how I went to the other side, um, I had the pleasure and the honor of dropping it on um, stories written by a current prisoner. And uh, so in some in some instances, um, I'm going to delve into some of the things that, I, that I've already recounted on that story. But this one is pertaining specifically to him. So after I left from um, from the main line, this dude from Compton that had already been so let me let, let me give you a little history on how this dude used to operate. This dude had his porters, which is, every section has a couple of porters, and. This dude had his porters doing his bidding, um, coming down straight from a senor, you know. But the thing with this dude is that he was abusing his power, you know. He had the block, and basically the senor um, that he was answering up to, um, you know, told him, like, do your thing, you know. I know you got a good judgment. Do your thing. And that's just, like, stupid serious, you know, like, Get at me. Other than that, do your thing. This dude got so power. He got so power hungry that he started making llamadas, started tripping on dudes, and he started he he started lying to the senores. He started, and in this case, he started lying to the senor specifically. And uh, he was, um, although my Sally at the time, and did shoot himself in the, in the foot, so to speak. He, um, a lot of the things that were said about him were not true. But this is what happens when you mess up. It leaves you vulnerable and open for people to make things up about you. So, for example, you may do 60% you may be guilty of doing 60% of the things that they claim against you, but because you're 60% guilty, they have 40% to make things up about you, and they're going to believe it because you messed up already. So you no longer you no longer have credibility, right? So this is what this did. This is what this dude did. He did it to several people, not just my Sally. He did it to several people on the block, a couple of camaradas on the yard. And it kept mounting up, mounting up, mounting up, mounting up. And that block, when I got to that block, bro, it was like he had his whole gang. And they were all from L.A. They were all from L.A. This dude was from Compton. He had everybody from L.A. on his side. And they were systematically bullying dudes, trying to bully dudes. And it was working, you know for a lot of people. And when it when it came to me and my Sally, you know, like he couldn't he couldn't pick. You know, he could have picked for me because I know how the game runs and fortunately I was in contact with a couple of senores myself. But even if I wasn't, I, I know how the game goes and you're not gonna run game on me. You know, you're not gonna try to push up on me. You're not gonna try to intimidate me. Um, by saying that you know this person, that person, it's fine. Even if you know that person or not, and I know nobody, I know the reglas. You know, I'm a sureño. I'm a soldado. You know, I know how it runs. And the moment, even if you try to push the name of the señor that you're in contact with, all I have to do is like, okay, cool, let me talk to him. Every sureño has the right to talk to any señor at any given time. You know, so basically... That's what happened. Um, dude broke it down. He's like, no, no, it's not even like that. This isn't that. So they could get away. Basically, they could get away with what they could get away with, right? And um, so that's how he was getting away with a lot of things with different dudes, you know? And um, let me tell you the story. After I left, this is what ended up happening. <clears throat> they went out to the day room. And before that, they had approached my Sally behind a cell door, 
And they were telling him, like, hey, why did you let your celly leave? This, this, and that, what not, right? And my celly was like, what you talking about, man? I I didn't let him leave, right? And for those of you that know the story, you know that he let me leave, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, he had to deny it. He had to deny it, so he was denying it. So when he went out to the day room, um, this dude from Compton, right, came up to my celly with maybe around, I want to say, what, like four or five dudes, right? And the rest of the day room was out there, like 10 more homies. And he tried to finesse the shit. He tried to be like badass and try to go up to my celly. And when I was already gone, keep in mind, you know, and he went up to him and he's like, uh, you know what you got coming? And he pulled out a strap and tried to hit my celly. He tried to blast him. My celly took off on him ASAP. Boom, 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 you know, started thinking that dude. Boom, 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 boom. When that happened, obviously this dude got the block. That's when everybody else jumped in. So this was the plan that they had. This dude on a, on a 180 on a level four yard, whoever's going to stab somebody, that's the person that's going to stay on you. But this dude was such a, such a coward that he wanted to stab my Sally a few times and then let a couple of dudes go in and clean it up for him. My Sally didn't let him do that. He took off on him. So, in the process of that happening, everybody moved in my Marcelli. They ended up stabbing him 17 times. 17 times. If they would have put in three dudes, if this dude wasn't a coward, he would have either been involved or not. Let's just say he wasn't involved. He would have sent two, three dudes in on my celly with, with, with fievels, with, 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 um, with them things. And they probably could, they probably would have been able to kill him, but because my celly took off on him, everybody followed suit. Because if a bloquero gets taken off on, everybody has to jump. And there were so many people trying to stomp out my celly and stab him that they got in each other's way. And anybody knows anybody that's been in this type of situation knows the truth of my words. Whenever you have a lot of people trying to stomp on somebody. They end up kicking each other, stabbing each other in some cases, and they don't get the job done right. And it was all because of my celly taking off on that dude. He wasn't going to give. He wasn't going to give him the satisfaction of getting away with a few piquetes, a few stabs, you know. Because keep in mind, they already had history. And like I said on my story prior, I waited for a few days. Hoping, hoping that we got off lockdown so I could, before I left to this side, so that I could take off on this dude. So this bloquero, he, had, he he was a porter himself. He was a porter himself. And what I wanted to do was when I was going to go out for medical or something, I was gonna, I was going to take off on this dude, beat his ass, and, and take off that way after they asked me to take um, to take my celly out. That's how I was going to go out, but I wasn't able to do it. So this fool was trying to sneak attack my celly. My celly didn't, he wasn't having it. And uh, when it was all said and done, it was 17, 17 holes in my celly's body. And when I seen him in the back, like I told you guys prior, this dude's head looked like it was, <laughs> his head it was almost like the size of a small watermelon. Black and blue, black and blue. But the reason he didn't die was because they weren't able to hit an artery or, or a specific area because there was too many fools trying to get at him, right? So after this happened, man, my study went back there. He ended up finding out through uh, one of the senores cellies. Yes, one of the senores cellies. I'm not going to put him out there. Um, because they could definitely get it. I'm pretty sure that dude's still active. Older cat. I'm not going to put him out there because that's not what I'm here for. Um, told him, like, nah, bro. 
every he was still on the aisle, meaning roll call. He was still quote unquote active, considered active, but they were just waiting for him to get out to the yard so that they could try to kill him again. That's how it goes. But this dude told him like, nah, bro, you're done. It's a wrap. And the reason why he he gave him this information was because my Sally had looked out for him before. Under the nose of the senor, he had looked out for him before. Um, and I don't say this story to disrespect organizations or nothing like that. Man, I have nothing but respect for them because they're very dangerous and they're very righteous in many ways. You know, but they know they know what they're doing. Um, but this is the truth. That's why I omit names. So. He let him know that, no, he's done. It's a wrap. So my study went to his side. And um, so this dude from Compton, man, kept doing the same shit that he was doing, thinking that it was never going to catch up to him, ever going to catch up to him. And um, before you knew it, this dude ended up getting blasted off the yard. And the lesson in this story, guys, youngsters out there, real offenders listening, this dude ended up getting it bad. Getting it bad. He thought he was on top of the world. He thought he could keep sneaking his way, snaking his way in the good graces of the senores. But the senores ain't, ain't dummies. Them dudes know exactly what they're doing. And if you think you could get over on them, eventually it's going to come back to you. You know, so they ended up blasting this dude, man. And for anybody out there listening, man, you don't ever want to put yourself in a situation where you, you're going to be susceptible to being stabbed or being used, you know, or being in this type of situation, like I said before. If you guys have not heard the story, it's it's on Tony's channel. I'm pretty sure he was going to mention it anyways. But it's the, it's the, the video that says why he went to the other side. And that'll add a lot more context to my story, but it's like we're all human beings, you know, and I don't wish harm on anybody, but this is one of the few cases where I felt kind of like happy in a way that I've seen that karma work dysfunction when it caught up to this dude, because this dude was somebody that was... um Power hungry, stabbed, getting people stabbed. He was one of them dudes that was trying to getting people stabbed, getting people messed up, and would never do it himself. And the one time that he tried to do it himself, it backfired on him because he tried it on the wrong person. So even back then, he was getting his karma. Even before the karma, they ended up getting them stabbed. So yeah, man, that's that's the story. Um, that's the story right there, Tony. I always think, man, you reap what you sow, man. Whatever you put out is what you might receive, man. So uh, it's uh, it's very unfortunate, man, how all this is just a bunch of brown on brown um, violence, man. It's 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 ridiculous, man. Jealousy, envy, um, egos, arrogance, my boy. Like the these, these on this level, we're supposed to be camaradas. We're supposed to be for each other and all kinds of stuff, but. Brown people are the ones that end up hating on the brown people the worst, bro. And it's sad to see, homeboy. It, it is very sad, bro, because, you know, it's out, it, out here on the streets, it's the same thing. You know, you see browns uh, targeting browns, you see blacks targeting blacks. Um, everybody's hating on each other, and it's like that within the prison system, too. You, you guys claim uh, unity, you guys claim, you know, this and that, but... You know, twenty murders say uh, twenty murders a year say otherwise, and it's always within their own people. Exactly, bro. Well said. Yeah, I mean, and it's crazy because um, it's almost like what I've experienced, my boy. It's almost like we know the we in prison we know the consequences of a war that could kick off between races, right? So it's almost like. We turn on each other to avoid a bigger war just so that we can satisfy our, our, our appetite for violence on each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. 
man. But ladies and gentlemen, man, if you heard, if you if you enjoy this talk, man, please, you know, subscribe to the homies L's channel, man. A prisoner's awakening. You know, a link will be posted up in the description and in the in the comment section. As always, L man, it's a, it's a great pleasure to have you on the show, bro, man. Thank you for blessing us with your presence, big dog, man. Man, thank you for having me. And like you said, bro, like, man, yeah, guys, it's a big injustice. Um, you know, they 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 hack my channel. Um, certain people hack my channel because, you know, apparently I'm too real. You know, I'm too real, and uh, you know, so they they did what they did, and now I'm just asking you guys for some help. You know, just try to get the a little a couple of subscribers just to um, keep spreading the message. You know, it's not about the money. You know, it's about the message, the lessons. You know, for the youngsters, and every single new subscriber I get, or even a resubscriber. You know, because I love your channel, my boy. I've always been a fan. And I'm gonna continue to be a fan of it. You know, so anybody that can support me in this time of need, man, I really appreciate you guys, and I appreciate you for having me, my boy. Oh man, most definitely, man. The pleasure is always mine, man. You, you guys, man, do me the favor, man. Go show some support, man. Go show some love to the homie L, man, and run those numbers up, man. We are a force within ourselves, believe it or not. Trust me, we we, we have the power to make things happen overnight. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, my boy. I appreciate you, man.